I've been lifting consistently for about 12 to 13 years and I've put on a, a good amount of muscle, a good amount of strength. Um, I've started my, my best numbers are a 585 pound deadlift, a 325 pound bench, a 465 pound squat. Um, and I've gotten pretty lean right now. I'm around 10 to 11% body fat at 187 pounds. Um, but I've learned, learned a lot of things the hard way, right? I've made a lot of mistakes in my lifting career. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be sh sharing with you what I would have done differently in the beginning so that you can learn from my mistakes and take advantage of your newbie gains. All right. Because newbie gains really is a real thing, guys. Like you can definitely make a lot more progress early on in your lifting career. You know, that that's just the fact of the matter. Um, the point where I'm at, where I'm a very advanced lifter and I've been doing this for a while, I'm happy with like very small amount of progress, right? But when you're early on, you really want to take advantage of how much progress you can make in the very beginning. So mistake number one that I'm going to share with you is dirty bulking, all right? It's great to be in a solid caloric surplus, like when you're just getting started into lifting to make sure you're supporting muscle growth and recovery, but don't overdo it. Like I used to eat so much um, being like this huge caloric surplus because I, I was a very small kid. I just wanted to put on a lot of size early on, but I used to just eat so much and justify it as bulking, right? I would, I would say I borderline had like a binge eating disorder, you know, disguised as, as bulking basically. So I, I would even do something called fat Fridays, um, in high school. Um, those that knew me, knew me back then remember this, but I would literally go to Chipotle and then like two to three other like fast food restaurants after school every week on Fridays and just like be stuffing my face. Like I would have to say just, just after school, I was probably getting four to 5,000 calories. Um, just at, like after school, that's not for the whole day. Right. So I would also eat Papa John's pizzas. I eat, I eat an entire Papa John's pizza every Monday. Um, and I was just eating excessively, you know, it, I was just eating way too many calories and not nutrient dense calories, right? These were, it was just, it was just the pure definition of dirty bulking. Okay. So this, this allowed me to put on a good amount of muscle pretty quickly early on, but I also put on a good amount of fat if I'm being real, right? So this, this made it unnecessarily hard for me when I started to, you know, decide I wanted to cut and lean out, right? It would have done if, you know, if, if I would have done more of a strategic approach, like more of a strategic bulk, like a lean bulk, um, I would have had, you know, I would have made things a lot easier on myself in the long run, right? Because last year I did my first kind of strategic bulk, you know, a really strategic lean bulk. Um, and I put on 12 pounds of muscle while staying the same body fat percentage during that time. I was getting DEXA scans, like really measuring all these things. Um, so I put on 12 pounds of solid muscle without really putting on fat. So if I would have did that early on, it would have made getting lean a lot easier. And it just, the whole process of getting in shape, like would have been a lot easier in the long run. So learn from my mistakes and bulk responsibly guys, <laughs> like <clears throat> only go on strategic lean bulks, um, you know, be on a plan, even when it comes to bulking, don't just do these forever dream bulks and put on excessive amount of fats. Cause in the long run, guys, that's, that's just going to make it a lot harder for you when you decide you want to lean out. Okay. So that's mistake. Number one, mistake. Number two is not focusing on sleep and recovery. So I've done a full sleep podcast in the past. If you haven't checked that one out, go check it out. But s sleep is so vital to your progress. And I didn't really realize this early on, right? It just wasn't really on my radar. Um, it really makes me wonder where I'd be at this point if I had been focusing on sleep early on. Like I was, as a kid, like when I was, you know, first getting into lifting when I was 14, 15, 16 years old, I mean, I got started pretty dang early on. Um, you know, I was probably averaging five or six hours of sleep. That's, that's terrible. That was probably terrible for my overall growth in general, but also just lifting as well. Right. So it really makes me wonder where I would be um, if, if early on I was focused on sleep and recovery. So, you know, um, do yourself a favor 
and really focus on quality and quantity sleep, you know, focus on your sleep habits to make things a lot easier on yourself. You literally break down your muscle fibers when you work out. Like when you're working out, you're literally tearing all your muscle fibers. And then when you sleep and recover, that's when you're building back up and you become a little bit stronger. You kind of get that overcompensation, right? So um, if, if you're not sleeping and recovering properly, then you're literally just breaking yourself down over time and you're not recovering. So, you know, the, I feel like in, in this, in the fitness space, there's kind of the grind culture, like sleep when you're dead type of mentality. Sometimes this just isn't realistic. And this is a recipe for disaster. So, so don't get caught up in that part of the fitness industry where, you know, and, and I hate to call them out, but, <laughs> but people like, cause I love Jocko, but people like Jocko Willink, like that, that's such a small percentage of the population that can sleep four to five hours a night and, and function optimally or even even really function in general right but to see optimal progress most of the population like 99 percent of the population is not going to be able to sustain that long term um, and see results so don't get caught up in that okay so learn from my mistake and focus on your sleep and recovery okay and then mistake number three and this is something i've talked about in other videos but it's just flip-flopping your goals too frequently so maybe it comes from me, you know, playing a lot of different sports when I was younger, but I would flip flop from, from goal to goal, like every, every three months or so, you know, maybe it's cause you know, when you play sports as a kid, it's like every, every season, there's a different, you know, seasonal sport. So you're kind of just used to that. Um, but I, yeah, like every three months or so I'd be like, all right, I'm setting a new goal that I'm going for. So I'd bulk, then I'd cut that I'd want to be able to dunk <laughs> And increase my vertical and then I want to be strong and I was tracing too many different goals all the time right so it's it's great to have these goals but be realistic about the amount of time it's going to take to achieve these goals all right so like this past year I went on like a 10 month bulking phase really gave myself enough time to put on muscle uh, and then I went on like a four month cut which is longer than I usually cut for as well. I usually do like a 12 week cut and then a seven. Now, now I'm shifting into a seven month powerlifting prep, which is much longer than I've ever just trained for straight strength, right? So these are much more realistic timeframes to achieve these type of goals. Okay. So learn from my mistakes, give yourself enough time to hit realistic goals, right? Like Rome was not built in a day very cliche. And, um, you know, when you chase, when you try to chase multiple rabbits at once, you're not going to chase any of them, right? Choose one rabbit, chase it, go ahead and get it, move on to the next, right? So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked this video, then like the damn video and subscribe for more personal development and fitness content like this. But I'll see you guys in the next video. In the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.